Hi everybody, welcome to the Rupa Subramania show. I'm your host Rupa Subramania. Today we're going to be speaking to journalist Manar Al-Sharif who's based in Dubai. Manar is Palestinian. She was born in Syria, raised in Damascus, um, ended up in Cairo after she and her family fled the Syrian civil war uh, and decided to pursue journalism uh, in Gaza. Um, as I mentioned, Manar is Palestinian and she had this deep desire to return to uh, Gaza um, to reconnect with her roots. Um, so she uh, was enrolled at the Islamic University to study journalism, but then she quickly realized that this uh, journalism program uh, was uh, was mostly propaganda, and 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 that uh, made her decide to step away from academia, and she chose to chart her own independent path. So she began writing extensively for various publications around the world, uh, trying to shed light on what life in Gaza is like for the average Palestinian. She was also a member of a, a small volunteer organization called the Gaza Youth Committee, where she and her colleagues uh, organize video chats under an important bridge building initiative called uh, Skype with Your Enemy. Uh, the idea really was for Gazans and Israelis to get to know each other, which is, I think, a fantastic idea. The initiative um, began um, uh, getting very popular at that time and began drawing lots of attention and it was extremely well attended. As a result of this, she was arrested by Hamas police, which really frowned upon this kind of bridge building initiative. Uh, and she ended up uh, spending time in a, a women's prison um, under Hamas control. She was eventually released from prison and sought refuge in Dubai, where she joins us today. She'll be speaking to us about the ongoing crisis in the Middle East, her life in Gaza, and uh, what life is like for the average Palestinian in the Gaza Strip, and what the future holds for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Given the length of the interview this week, I've decided to highlight three important sections from the interview that clearly illustrate the everyday situation for the average Gazan, not at the hands of the Israelis, but at the hands of Hamas, which governs Gaza. First, when she was in Gaza, when she was living in Gaza, Manar met with a family. While speaking to a uh, woman in the family, the woman points to a photo on the wall behind her. She says that young man in the photo is her son and he's no more he was killed not by the israelis but by hamas these and other stories manar heard of the violence hamas had enacted on its own people are harrowing reminders about the internal dangers the everyday dangers that the average gazan faces every day not at the hands of the israelis but at the hands of hamas there was something that i uh, uh an interview that i watched uh, a few days ago uh, where you sp related the story about speaking to a woman who was pointing to a photo of her son on the wall. And, yeah. you know, can you tell us uh, a bit about that? Can you tell us what happened there? Well, also, uh, it's also go back to the families we were visiting through Ramadan or maybe through different times. And I would just be interested to know more and then I would look at the photo and and then I yeah. would just ask out you know like who they missed and and then they just would be like oh this is something happened in 2007 when Hamas controlled Gaza and they started to take over by force by killing members of the the BA and also arresting and you know so it was a very big event for the Gazans where people outside do not know anything about it, you know? So, and even now I believe like, it's hard to convince them that it happened. It needs time for the Gazans also to speak about it. They are traumatized, you know? They are very tired even. So, I mean, th there was this, the example that you, you gave was this woman who points to the, photo of her son on the wall and she said it was not uh, the Israelis who killed my son it was Hamas how um, 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 common are such stories in Gaza well uh, lots of stories I mean 
it's it's like very common thing even without being involved with the ba you could be walking in the street i don't know with a boyfriend with a girlfriend and hamas will do also similar stuff and first of all it will be jail but if you will be very hard on them and not accepting what's happening by them you could also be killed and that happened this is what I was shocked about. How could that happen? You know, you are here to take care of the people. If you are claiming that you are a movement who can help the Palestinians to have a state, you are killing them. This is something shocked me personally. And I wished we have something like this. This is why I was interested to know more about them and about their activities inside Gaza and how they help the people. You know, what is your vision for the area? I am a Palestinian and I have the right to know what is your vision for the area and for the state of Palestine. But when I saw that, it's like, it's a shock. It's just a shock. I I, I started, like, I want to know more. The curiosity inside me led me to know more stories. Here I started to be like, okay, no, this is something cannot be real, cannot like, I cannot understand very well. This is something should not happen from the first place. But to whom you should speak about, you know? So tell us, uh, can you can you tell us about one of these stories that you heard in, in Gaza from someone that you were speaking to? Well, some, as I'm telling something, you. Something that, uh, that uh, still stays with you after all this time. Well, also, also we were we would just be sitting, you know, with the friends, and another friend would just come. There is a blood on their faces, and I would ask also the same question: "What's happening?" And they would just be like, "Oh, it's okay, like nothing real, nothing serious. It's just Hamas, you know. Even they deal with it as like, just imagine, you know, like we we like we can't do anything, you know. But why? Maybe they would just tell you, oh, maybe because I wrote something on my Facebook. This is why." They didn't like it, you know. They sent a warning. I didn't react on it. The next day, they could really come and beat me, you know. This is also very common, even before the war, I think, and I believe it's still going on. Are there uh, protests against Hamas in Gaza? Have well, there been protests? Yeah. Yes. Also, everyone can check that up. I think, and I believe it's on the media right now. And... Like the like the famous the popular demonstrations they did, it's called "We Need to Leave," and they were demanding Hamas for giving them more rights in Gaza, and also that you can still see videos where they were beaten in a very bad way. So, just painful to see even. So it's there on the media and everyone can check that, you know. In this next clip, Manar talks about the circumstances that led her to spending time in a Hamas prison and the experiences she had during her time there. Mm. Oh. Well, so you spent uh, how much time in a Hamas prison for organizing these chats? Three months. What was that experience like? Well, uh, yeah, as I'm saying, I was curious to know more. Like, I would just be happy to go to the investigations every day. And I was upset by the way they think. Like, I thought they would be just more stronger, maybe, or more accurate, or more smarter, you know, as the people outside of maybe Israel think, you know. I thought... This is something going to be huge. But when I went there, they were just asking the silly questions. Who do you work for? Who's supporting you? Who is paying for you? Is Israel made you work for that? You know, like questions even like, I don't know, you know, like I can't even answer. Like I really can't answer you, you know. But and and this is what I said. I didn't even deny what, what we did. And the answers will be, well, we don't need your help here. You know, but you did something like this. You maybe, I don't know. So they, like, there was no way to communicate in a, in a logical way where I can, you know, answer these questions. So I would just give maybe details or things that I, I already did with, you know, more details and that's it. So it was like 
crazy to be having a conversation with them. Were you uh, tortured, uh, Manar, in, in prison? Well, no. I um, For them, they were like very impressed about how strong I am and how I am not crying maybe or how, I don't know. And they were like, okay, we need you more here. So the only thing, they would just be holding me for a long time in the cell until they take me from a place to another and then back to my cell. And like, you know, it's it's maybe hard. It's, it's, it is hard. I don't know. But I told you, I was just curious to know more and to listen more, you know, and like, just I was like trying to understand how this place works, you know. Mm -hmm. um were you um uh, did you I interact with other prisoners in 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 prison well well yeah well yeah also that was good uh i was afraid in the beginning uh but yeah. then i started to um to understand them and to see their stories also the stories not all of them also like few number of them also was jailed for things that mm -hmm. you can jail a person for that reason which is as I told you maybe having a boyfriend or or something and then they would just be you know jailed for that and then they would Hamas would just call their families and tell them oh but your daughter was like sleeping with someone you know like why are you doing this she she wasn't maybe she was in a car maybe she was walking with them or you know so they would just be so Hamas is doing that to not let her family just stand with her in difficult times, I guess. And they would just keep numbers of them inside. Like, they love it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I feel that this is something they love to do, but it's not logical. Like, it's not fair even to have it, yeah. you know? And uh, I think also it's hard to, to have a lawyer. What I discovered in the prison that it's not in the in the beginning maybe also it's not allowed to have a call with your family to have a call with a lawyer to know more about your rights to know more about what you did it's like it's a it's a very big chaos you know like it's, you would just be jailed and that's it without knowing where you are going next it's killing yeah. this is what killed me the most that why I cannot know more, you know? And I tried many times to write to them even from the prison and I tried to demand more, I need to know more, you know? I have no problem, maybe I did something wrong for your country, for your place. I have no problem to pay the price for it, but could you tell me how much to the price? In this final clip, Manar talks about the attitude of those in the West when it comes to viewing this conflict and her thoughts on why she thinks so many um, are celebrating Hamas as freedom fighters rather than terrorists. What do you, what do you make of um, uh, people here in the West who celebrate Hamas? Given your own experience with Hamas, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in Gaza, what do you make of people who celebrate Hamas as freedom fighters and, um, you know, as, 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 you know, as martyrs? What do you make of that? Well, again, it's very uh, painful thing to just me as a journalist to see people who would just be um, having that stereotype in their minds and they are fighting for it, and but may but they might just commit a crime for just having that stereotype in their heads, you know. I mean, I and I believe that people in Gaza, like, would not be happy with what you are doing, and um, yeah, it just it just crazy to have something in mind and just go for it or with it because you only saw that on media, but the reality is something different. So I feel that you need to know more if you want to know more it's so easy to know more by talking with the people directly and this is what i ask the people all the time to do i i live in the middle east i have never been outside the middle east and i cannot comment on the russian ukraine war 
I cannot. I just cannot. You know, I have no idea. I have never been there. So I cannot. You cannot do that. You know, you need to be a journalist by yourself and to go to ask the people. If you have a problem with reaching the people, just ask around. Maybe ask me. <laughs> Maybe to ask you, you know. It's it's not so hard to do that and just be open and listen to other realities might be around you and you are just mm -hmm. not caring even to listen to it, you know? Yeah. Um, what do you think, um, you know, if, if you say that people in Gaza don't really support Hamas, you say 75% of the people, according to you, do not support Hamas. Why hasn't there, why haven't the people tried to get rid of Hamas? When they tried, as I told you, um, and I don't know if I should say that on media, but I know many informations and I know many events that happened in Gaza by young people who were trying to bomb their security places and that was stopped. Like, yeah. I know they did their best. But also another thing I would like to mention that when I was shared, I discovered that we have no human rights, whether in the Middle East, whether in the West, whether like globally, we don't have a good human rights organization. What is existing in Gaza, maybe the UN, they're in the cross, yes, but they still like none of them could help. As long as you, could, you couldn't like or you cannot help me to speak up for the freedom of speech, like don't ask people to speak up. Don't ask me to speak up, you know? Will you will you pay the price for me? Will you at least protect me if I did that? No, so please stop. And I hear that many times by the people outside. Why the Gazans are not speaking? How would you like them to speak up? And you and maybe if you went to the jail, maybe one day, maybe you will commit suicide the next day. Like you can't ask people to do something like this and you have never experienced what this Gaza, you know, like you have never been there. Uh, Manar, thank you so much for joining us uh, from Dubai. Uh, thank you for sharing your stories and uh, thank you for your courage and uh, and for continuing to speak out uh, against uh, Hamas and for advocating on behalf of uh, uh, the Palestinians. And, uh, and, you know, I wish you all the best and, uh, and hopefully we'll have you back on here again very soon. Thank you.